I'll share something from Kenneth W. Hagen, who is the son of Kenneth E. Hagen, who was the founder of Rhema Bible Training Center, which is the Bible college I went to from 1990 to 1992, where I am so glad I learned about faith. Oh, wow, what a difference to know you're not just, just a bug on a pin, a victim of life, a victim of circumstances. Whatever will be, will be. I have nothing. I have no control over the bad things that happen in my life. Wrong. That's a lie. That's a big, big, big lie. And so I loved so much what Kenneth E. Hagen was told by the living by the living God, and that is, go teach my people faith. We need to use faith. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Speak to that mountain and it will be removed. God's word is like fire. God's word is like fire. God, every single person has a measure of faith. Every person. Don't think, oh, they have, they, they have, she has a lot of faith. No, you have a measure of faith and you need to you need to use it, not just be lazy. Don't be a lazy Christian. Well, I'll start here. With so much happening in the world, I wanted to remind you to keep going over the fundamentals of faith. We must respond to adversity and uncertainty in line with God's word. Despite shortages, a roller coaster stock market and soaring inflation. Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Our faith is based on the evidence, the evidence of God's word. The, the substance of our faith is being confident that what God said will come to pass. Faith is not governed by circum... Oh boy, is this a biggie. Faith is not, is not governed by circumstances. It is governed by what we believe and what we say. You will have what you say, what we speak. Be careful what you say. So many Christians who've been around who've been around the things of God, been around even this word of faith movement, still blah, 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 talking about things that just are cursing themselves, especially regarding old age and memory, and I can't do this and I can't do that. Don't play into the devil's hands. Anyway, I'll just say, faith is not governed by circumstances. It is governed by what we believe and what we speak. Mark eleven twenty three tells us to speak to the mountains in our lives. We can tell them to be removed. We can tell them to be removed and to be cast into the sea. If we do that, and don't doubt, oh, it's down deep inside here. It's deep inside your belly down in here. I'm pointing down here in my belly. <laughs> it's deep inside your belly. Faith. Faith. Mm. Okay, um, if we do that and don't doubt in our hearts that our words will come to pass, we will see exactly what it is that we are saying. The day we were born again, God gave us what we needed to succeed. The day we were born again, God gave us what was needed for us to succeed. <clears throat> Romans 12, 3. God has dealt to every man and woman. God has dealt to every person the measure of faith. Thank you, God. I'm so glad I have the measure of faith. Sometimes it's so easy to just lose hope about a circumstance. But then all of a sudden I realize I have faith. 
faith. God put faith inside of me. I can believe against all the all the adversities. I really can. I really can. I really have something in me that knows. I know that I know that I know God's word is true, no matter what it looks like. So we can say, so we can't say that we don't have faith because guess what? We do. The real question is what are you doing? What am I doing to develop my faith, to grow my faith, to strengthen my faith? I want to encourage you to work out each day to develop your spiritual muscles. Oh, praise God. Wow. Read the word. And I recommend, if you're not reading the word at this time, start out with a chapter of Proverbs every day. Proverbs 13 is, today is the 13th, so Proverbs 13 is a good place to start. And then you can start out with Psalm 13. And then you can, um, well, I'll leave it to you. I know there are, I know there are uh, just Google it, a Bible plan. Start right in on July 13th, some, some plan to read the Bible. But don't start so big that it, that it uh, discourages you. Start out with something you're going to really do. And I heard Jerry Sibel, Pastor Jerry Sibel say that he was so inclined to going to sleep whenever he tried to read the word, he would stand on the edge of the bathtub to read it. So I encourage you, even at the end of the day, if it's two in the morning and you still haven't read that one chapter of Proverbs, stand on the edge of the bathtub and read, at least read one chapter of Proverbs every day took me a long time to get to a place where, well, I'll just leave. I, it's, it's, so, it's so wonderful to actually enjoy the word. It's wonderful to be excited about it. Wow. So, uh, as your spiritual mus muscles grow stronger, your faith will be able to handle bigger things. So, as you get like you building yourself up inside. This is your spirit man, the inside. And as you build that up, you can handle bigger and bigger things, uh, greater and greater adversities. Every <clears throat> Everything we do at Kenneth Hagen Ministries is designed to help people grow in faith. Lynette and I, that is Lynette Hagen and uh, Kenneth W. Hagen, have de dedicated our lives to helping people build their spiritual foundations. When Ramus started over 45 years ago, I thought we might train ah, 50 students a year and be doing well. But now we have schools in 54 countries. At any one moment, we have tens of thousands of students worldwide in class studying. Praise the Lord. Faith. What was I going to tell you about faith? Oh, I know. Something that I think can undermine our faith is that story about Paul's thorn. And it seems as though it's been translated as though God gave Paul a thorn. That's, a, that's not true. It doesn't say that. It says, I received a thorn. Satan gave the thorn. Everything good comes from God. Everything bad comes from the devil. Good God, bad devil. So, if you have adversity in your body, you might be deceived into thinking, well, God is giving this to me to teach me something wrong. God is not giving it to you. The devil is behind every single physical affliction and life problem that there is. Satan is behind it either directly or indirectly. And God says, Jesus says to Paul in that, in that story about the thorn, uh, that his grace is sufficient. What does that mean? It means his grace is sufficient for him, not only to go through the process of receiving 
his deliverance or his healing, but his grace is sufficient for the resolution, the total restoration of whatever it was that was causing the torment. And um, let's see. I believe in God right this very minute for a big thing. If I'm, I'm several big, lots of big things. I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing. I'm not saying I've arrived, but I'm telling you, I know what God's done for me so far. And I know he's not going to let me down now. And he won't let you down either. He will not let you down. But you have to start, start saying, it is written. It is written. It is written. It is written by his stripes, I am healed. It is written, I am the head and not the tail. It is written, I am an overcomer. It is written. Start where you are. Don't think that you have to be some superstar tomorrow. Start where you are. And, and uh, just do it. Amen.